Joey Logano got himself in a little hot water at Atlanta over the weekend by altering his gloves just a little bit. I their you know, gloves. I, I can't understand how that would give anybody a competitive advantage. But let's talk about it. And and that's what that's what the big question has been. The first question I had was when did we start inspecting gloves? And the answer I got was when there is visual evidence evidence of shenanigans. And here's the thing. He basically was putting had sewn some webbing into the gloves so that when he put his hand out up against the or out with the you know the netting during qualifying trying to keep air out of the inside of the car because if you keep the air inside the car it helps the downforce during qualifying wouldn't it have been easier to just wear mittens <laughs> well that's what i was wondering are mittens are mittens approved that's what i you know what i'm thinking is big big you know i'm thinking big mickey mouse gloves <laughs> Are they SFI approved? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, I'm beginning to wonder about Bozo's clown shoes, what what competitive advantage that might cause there. I guess I got to really hand it to NASCAR. Is that a pun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to hand it to NASCAR because they've got stuff in their rule book that you and I probably haven't even thought of yet. But it also goes to show you how smart these guys are in NASCAR that they can determine that that will help them get airflow into the car yeah, or keep it, keep out. it out. Yeah. And so Logano, he got penalized. He, he, his qualifying time outside front row was disallowed, disallowed, had to start at the back. And then we got a pass through penalty where at the end of the first lap, he had to come down pit road, which should have put him a lap or two down. But he got a huge break, Deb, when the caution comes out. He ends up on the lead lap. And that's neither, that's neither here nor there. That's just a huge break. It, it just happened. Oh. But NASCAR has also fined Joey himself $10,000 for a safety violation because the gloves were not SFI spec gloves. That's true. And, you know, NASCAR is really strict on SFI regulations. They expect inspect the belts the seats, the helmets, the uniforms. I mean, everything has to be SFI approved and within a certain range, a uh, year of manufacture and all. And they do not take that inspection lightly at all. And I'm wondering if it was a situation where they saw it at Daytona and said, don't come back again with that, like they did Ray Everham, the T-Rex car. And he thought he could get by with it, or was this the first time that they really cracked down on it? You know, it, yes, I've heard there's evidence of him holding his hand out during his qualifying run at Daytona, but it'll be interesting to see how that turns out later on down the road, whether or not he was warned at Daytona and brought him to Atlanta anyway. I, I I had a chance during pre-race, and I, I talked to him, and I said, I'm going to ask you about it, because, you know, and th to be fair, and Joey gets it. He understands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told him at the time, I said, look, if you can't comment on it, I understand that, but and that that's a fair answer. And he basically, he says, oh, I can't comment on it, and he basically, on the air, did not comment on it. And I kind of said, were you surprised at the, fi at the, the penalty? And he didn't say he was surprised. <laughs> he didn't say anything about it. But it's it's one of those things. So that's the thing, Bruce. I mean, it's this is we have all seen this in the sport over the years. Is you operate in the gray area. And I'm not sure how gray that area was. I'm still thinking ten grand could get him some really nice gloves at Saks Fifth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's NASCAR has always been about pushing the limits in the gray area. And in a lot of ways, you get to these guys in these engineering rooms and these crew chiefs. And what's amazing about guys in NASCAR is a lot of these crew chiefs and a lot of these people, they've learned this on the job of what works and what doesn't work. And it's amazing the things they come up with to think about this might work. This might give mm -hmm. us, you know, the slightest little bit of an edge. But when the cars are pretty much as equal as they are now, that little slightest edge is maybe the difference between first and second. And it goes back to it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is permission. If you don't get caught, you know, the adage, you're not cheating, you get caught.